All right, Yod fans, welcome back to another episode of The Steel Show. Um, you know, really exciting, obviously coming off of an awesome win uh, against Southern Oregon. Back here with co head coach Mike Morosky. But, um, you know, we didn't have an episode last week after the Western game. Apologize for that. So, Coach, I want to jump into that one real quick. Um, you know, tough loss out ma at Montana Western in the rain. Um, you know, good offensive performance, but obviously some things that didn't go perfect for you guys. So, can you kind of assess your team's performance there? Maybe what led to, unfortunately, not coming out with the win there, but also maybe some positive things. Yeah, the bottom line is the positive thing was was not our best game. Yep. And we still had a chance to win. We still had the ball with the mm -hmm. the last series at least, and and uh, three out of the, all let three of the last games. It's come down to that. Yep. So so we weren't able to do it against Montana Western and. I feel like I blew a call on fourth and one, uh, and hindsight, and you and I talked about it, hindsight's 2020, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, just the, the call I made was something we run uh, occasionally, but mm -hmm. it just wasn't good. It ended up in the mud, you're going, what am I thinking, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the mud. But, uh, but I was so proud of our guys. Again, they had us on the run defensively, and, yep. and uh, uh, again, it wasn't our best game defensively, mm -hmm. especially on the, on the back end. And John Jun again, John Jun li lived up player. to everything, yeah. and and mm -hmm. they he hit everything, they caught everything, mm -hmm. and and so it was really really tough. Hemmed him in a couple times, we slip, and then he runs down the sideline. So yep. he was just tough matchup for us. It'd be nice to get another shot at him because yeah. I think it was a very winnable game. Yeah. Uh, offensively, uh, we were a little stagnant at times but just got enough out of our special teams got some yep. opportunities and, and uh stayed in the game which all in all i was really proud of the team of course it's, it's never never feels good to to lose but um you know sometimes w w whatever it is you just aren't on quite on your game yeah and, and that felt like one of those games and i have to own that the coaching staff had to own it and so we've really tried to pick it up a little bit in terms of preparation and, yeah. and uh, all those things. But the bottom line is we talk every week, Brock, those teams are good. Exactly. You know? I was gonna so, say, you, know, uh, you have to give Montana Western credit as far as just obviously the plan, but in the rain, they came out and pass offense. I mean, they just executed on offense. Like I said, didn't really drop right. any balls. And sometimes teams go out and play well. You yeah. Know, that's just how yeah. it is. And we're really good too. I mean, so, so it's nothing to, to um, knock our guys. I, mm -hmm. I love our team and uh, love the way they respond. And that was a, that was a great, response yeah so, yeah yeah absolutely so moving on to the southern game you guys come off a loss you know obviously heartbreaking in, in heartbreaking fashion you know how did you feel the team responded in the week of practice and then ultimately you know assess your team's performance against southern oregon i thought the team responded really really well to practice and that's that's the hallmark of the program even from the early days that we're gonna we're gonna practice hard we're gonna be enthusiastic mm -hmm. we're gonna focus on the next game at hand and not dwell on the past game yep. or not look ahead to the future uh, games, but uh, so true to form. We had a great week of practice, mm -hmm. and um, and then Southern comes in and kind of switches things up on defense, which kind of threw us for a loop a little bit. Uh, not bad. I just didn't think it was our best adjusting game on the fly, which is always part of it. You prepare, 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 mm -hmm. but the reason you prepare is so that you can adjust, mm -hmm. and everyone knows why you're adjusting. Defensively, I thought we were good. It was disappointing, but that's the way football is sometimes. The disappointing thing was we have the game in hand. We're up 14-7, going in to score. Yep. And then Andy Peters, you know, yep. and it's what – if you played enough as a quarterback, you know, you fake, you're thinking, hey, maybe I got this. And right about here, you realize – Oh, no. Not good. Yep. Not good. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was the second interception on the 10-yard line, and – Handed to Southern, they made plays. Every mm -hmm. single one of his three picks in the first half turned into touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, we're we're in a barn burner. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, one of those picks, guy makes a great catch on it as well. Oh you know yeah, I mean? yeah, Just not play, not really you know? Andy's fault. The first two were are, are his fault, and he's a, a big enough man to understand yeah. that. And and so I think that's critical. And one thing I love about him, and and he's resilient and and very very level sometimes i wonder is he too level yeah, you yeah. know so uh, but one of the fun things is he really perks up yep. you know uh when the game's on the line yeah and, and again you know so the tech and the uh rocky games not tech and then the southern game just this past week were just phenomenal you yeah, know so I'm, not, about... I'm not sure we've seen seen that i mean i'm not sure we've had a game game winning totally. drives and now we've had 
too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so talk about what's been able to work for you guys on those. Because like you said, two game-winning drives. And, and, you know, when you look at Southern, I think they did a, a mostly pretty good job corralling the run game of your guys. Yes. You know, which, which yes. you know, we have a great run game here. But they obviously came out with a good plan and, and committed to it. So, you know, in the, in the last drive, you're having to, you know, hit some throws. And so what's been able to go into you guys having a couple game-winning drives, which you know in football is not easy to do? Well, this one in particular, and, and they were different than the way uh, – Tech played yep. us. So Tech played their standard defense and tried to play us two man in the backfield. So we were able to. We knew what we were getting, and then we were able to hit them on the run, uh, on the big run to yep. with Hunter Gilbert. This game, they rush three, drop eight. Mm-hmm. So there's literally no lane. So mm-hmm. the so the pressure on the quarterback isn't so much with the pass rush. It's don't make a dumb yep. decision. You got to know where you're going. Don't with try it. to force it in there. Because they got a lot of guys back there, so it seems great. Like like you're gonna, gosh, can't you find somebody, coach? But there's not many lanes out there mm-hmm. in, in the drop eight. Mm-hmm. So fortunately, we had well over two minutes, and and you know, so we had still a couple timeouts. Um, we ran the ball a couple of times, but but uh, Andy ran the ball very well. Yep. So, so that those were big, huge plays, and and. Uh, that's what we're counting on him for to make mm-hmm. some plays with his legs, um, and we got a big block on one of those. That yep. they, they called a blindside block, and so we got that overturned. But then there was a couple. Of this I told the staff afterwards. I thought sometimes there's games where these little three yard plays, and <coughs> yep. there was like four of them in that drive that were just huge. Mm-hmm. One was the third and one, yep. and we were going to call the same play we ran against Tech, little inside zone to to Hunter Gilbert, but they blitzed us, mm-hmm. you know, so we have double sticks on the outside, little five yard outs. Yep. Andy sees it, but there's no one on those edge rushers. So he throws it a little bit early. It's behind Brock. And he makes Brock a great makes catch. The great catch. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so that was huge. And then, um, Jake Dadley made a good catch a little bit later, not for a bunch of yards. So literally mm-hmm. it was 13 plays, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it was, uh, 75 yards. And, and so it was, we needed every yard from the penalties. There was a couple penalties, all blatantly obvious calls, in yep. my opinion. Then we get down in there, and um, we hit a little bubble screen to Brock again. The receivers yep. did a great job, so that was like the biggest play of the drive, like a 12-yard gain. And then we try to throw the ball to Jake Natalie, and it's the bang-bang play. But people who watch a lot of football would know right away that's an incomplete pass. You yep. know, it just it just is. He doesn't yep. have real control. Now it's another question if the officials are going to see of it course, that way. Of course, and there's no and there's no with, replay with no replay. So so you're always holding your breath a little bit, and um, and then we got the ball. Still had a timeout. Still at four. And what I should have called on uh, fourth and one against Montana Western, mm-hmm. I did call. Mm-hmm. You know, on uh, yeah. whatever it was, first and goal from yep. the four yard line. But time's running out. What we would do after that. It's a luxury to have a tight up, uh, a timeout there, so we yep. were, would have been able to call a timeout if we didn't make it in. But yep. that's all just uh, yeah theory now. So John Schofield, you know, I want to say is yeah. just an unbelievable competitor, mm-hmm. uh, athlete, and I've said it before, m- most every week he's just a tough guy, so, yep. and he has a knack for running. He's done some of that stuff from his high school. Yeah playing days in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada. Absolutely. So, uh, and, and, you know, again, credit to your team for, for continuing to just respond to adversity and, and deal with what's going on in the game, not hang your heads and just go make the next play. And, and then, you know, on top of that, every team in the country right now has attrition, right? I mean, it's a, uh, football's a war of attrition in a lot of ways, yeah, right? Especially yeah. at the end of, end of the season, start losing some guys. Everybody's going to have to have some backup step up or guys that are, um, you know, lesser known guys step up. Right. right. And, and obviously you had one step up huge this week, and Jacob Arms, who we're hoping to talk to here soon. Um, you know, talk about his performance, obviously, as a huge play in the second half with the pick six, but how proud of, of him were you to see a guy, you know, again, lesser known step up in that situation? Yeah, and lesser known, but he's he is starting now, yep. so he's worked his way into a yep. starting role. He's played offense last year, mm-hmm. was our special teams player of the year, so he's a um, brilliant kid, great physics student, and, and so he's, he's just a, a classic College of Idaho guy. Yeah. So waiting for his opportunity, has got it, has really made his way. He's one of those guys who's uh, always in the office. Yeah. Now, he's a very conscientious student, too. I'm sure he studies as much as anybody on the whole team. Mm-hmm. 
but he find, very disciplined, gets his sleep. So he's in here at least an hour extra a day because he switched positions. He went from offense to defense. Mm -hmm. Offensively, your experience with, hey, we do a lot of stuff more mm -hmm. than most. Mm -hmm. Defensively, Coach Jewell is our defensive coordinator is the same way. We yeah, do a complex. lot of stuff. Yeah. So it's a safeties driven defense and then he's played, but interestingly, um, Southern called a couple audibles. Yeah. And uh this yeah. was stick yeah. five yard out. So Jacob and, and uh Jacob Bodebanger are smart enough to he does this again and they know what's coming. Absolutely. Are, are, That's they, are they really going to do it? So, yep. But you know, there's always a shade of doubt there. And what, what uh, fired up Coach Jewell the most was he played it just textbook. He yep. ran to the guy's hip. Yep. He didn't get overly excited and think, yep. I know the play. You know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to do yep. it. Because you get burned. They aren't throwing the ball to the defensive yeah. guy. So he could yeah. throw it somewhere else. So, uh, But anyway, he played right to the receiver's hip jumped in front, and then he can go. I was telling you before, he runs 4'6", and even though he's a big guy, he doesn't look as fast, mm -hmm. but no one's going to catch him. Yeah. And uh, so, so he's just been more than a breath of fresh air. I yeah. mean, he's very conscientious, and then the effect that that has on the rest of the secondary for mm -hmm. sure, now we have guys communicating at a whole different level than we've ever had yeah. before. Yeah, so no, that's phenomenal. And obviously, he, he comes up with the potential to play the game to keep you guys in it and tie that thing back up. There's so. no doubt, because yeah. I, I think that the team was as optimistic as we can be. We're still human beings. and uh, It's tough. I'm thinking, we need to play. Yep. We need to play. We need a little momentum shift we need, here. We need, so we need some magic. We need, yeah. we need something here. Yeah. And then, you know, whatever. Even what? us in the beer garden, we're talking about, gosh, if we could just, that big turnover, right? Yeah. And set up some good field position and get right. the momentum going. And, yeah. and, and it was sure the best of everything because we were, did not punt in the first half. Yeah. Now we threw three interceptions. I wish we would have punted once instead <laughs> of instead of inter, inter, getting an interception. But then we were, we were three and out, like yeah. four or five straight drives. Mm -hmm. So it was, so we were really struggling mm -hmm. and um so sometimes you need that that's yeah. that's the nature of football and, yeah. and jacob came up with it and it was just amazing and Absolutely. uh and it was um just so huge such a lift and then i think it's a new game i don't think we went right down the field the next play the defense was on the field and southern mounts another drive yeah eventually yeah but we hold them to that field goal yep. and we have a chance Absolutely. With the, and and, uh, and again i believe that the conference is so good you can't ask for anything more than a chance than the to ball win. in your hands, you know, with a couple minutes left. So, Absolutely. So that's worked out and anyway. So so really, really fun too. I don't want to miss that either. And and I think yeah. the guys are having fun and, and uh and we obviously need to you can say we need to start better, but we started great in this game. Yep. It's just yep. so now we gotta work on the middle, I guess. Because, yeah, yeah. Because just we continue to grow too. But it's yeah, it's all about growing and football such a fantastic game. I mean, mm -hmm. it's what makes it the greatest game ever. And you never know. It's never quite the same. Even though the ending was kind of like Montana Tech, completely different, diff different deal. Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. That's, what, that's what makes it a lot of fun. Absolutely. So congrats on the team and, and yourself for that big win. And so, you know, looking ahead really quickly at Eastern, obviously the second time, you know, the Yotes have played them this year. Rivalry game on the road this time. You know, one of the things I want to ask you is, Obviously, the, the first game was pretty lopsided. Um, you know, how do you keep the team locked in in a situation where maybe you played them earlier in the season and it maybe was a lopsided victory? Um, but there's obviously everything's on the line in the last you know couple games of the season here. Yeah. So how do you keep the guys locked in in those situations? Yeah, it's more of uh, – and we talked a lot yesterday. I, I think that Western wasn't our best game for sure. There was components of the Southern game that weren't our best game. And my, my only hope and my – passion and job yeah. singular job is that the yotes would play their best football yep saturday and look around yes sir we aren't even looking ahead even though human nature says well we got to win these last two and but yep can't win two games at once yep. you know so yep. uh, so we got to focus on this it's a you know our goals i learned this from my old college coach jim soaker who's in the college hall of fame and you know your goals are really simple about the same every year winning season so when we got that sixth win, you know, yep. we secured the winning season, and then to compete for for a conference championship, yep. we have a chance to get a share of the conference title this week. Yep. So everything's on the line. Yep. And uh, most importantly, we just need to play better. So so the yep. focus is a lot on us, especially since we know Eastern Oregon. Yep. 
challenge the staffs. You know, we need great plans. You know, we're creative, we're good, and I want them to be hitting on all cylinders and not not bumming. It. Not that they are. You know, gosh, this, this is an exciting time. We oh, of course we played our way into some big exciting games, Absolutely. but I, I'm not worried in the least. Eastern Oregon is a huge rivalry, as mm -hmm. you know, and we've we've always honored that and respected that, respected mm -hmm. them. They would like nothing more than to beat us. They'll play their best game of the year. And, yes, they uh, will. And we want to play our best game. Absolutely awesome. Well, yo, fans, uh, hopefully you guys are, are ready to make the short two-and-a-half-hour drive over to Le Grand, and, and we have a good yoke contingent there in Le Grand this coming weekend. Uh, Coach, great win last week, and good luck this week. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Brock. Yep. Go Yotes. All right, yo, fans, here with Ben Ruby, local guy, Bishop Kelly grad, and, and really one of the unsung heroes of the C of I offense, you know, a guy that uh, – um, is going to do a lot of the dirty work. You know, you and I, I guess, have a little bit of that in common. That's pretty much all I ever did anyway, yeah. too. So, um, anyway, just getting right into it. Obviously, you know, a huge game against Southern, close game, another game-winning drive. You know, what was the vibe of the offense? You know, struggle a little bit, but just like Tech, you guys respond and then come up with a game-winning drive. So, how have you guys been able to continue to do that? Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with, uh, you know, the way we've been practicing. Uh, coaches have focused a lot on starting fast but also finishing fast. I mean, I think you know from years in the past, our offense is playing really well this year. Mm -hmm. um, and so to come out and kind of get stalemated that whole second half was just kind of a punch in the face. But, mm -hmm. I mean, the whole time we're talking about, you know, we just need to get one first down. Mm -hmm. We had one first down that whole second half until that last drive. And, mm -hmm. I mean, th that's what's different about the team this year. We got guys that, you know, we just believe we're going we're gonna to win no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we came out like we did the last time we were at home and just did what we needed to do to – to get that last touchdown. Absolutely. And, and, you know, like you said, nothing can replace the belief that at some point we're just going to make a play, yeah, just keep yeah. pressing the issue, you know. So, um, you know, one thing I want to ask you about is, is obviously, you know, C of I has really built the program and the offense, certainly on the run game, right? This is a this is a run first program and we always will be. And, and obviously you're a, a really key part of that going back to guys like Ringo Robinson and mm -hmm. Tyler Ray and, and you. Um, you know, what do you think makes the C of I run game so successful? I think it has a lot, a lot to do with just this, the selflessness uh, of the guys on the team. Um, you look at like the receiver room. You know, if we're going to be centered on the run, they're not going to get the rock a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but those guys just have the attitude of we're, you know, we're one, one of eleven. We're going to make the plays that we need to to help us win. So, if it's pouring rain and we're going to run the ball forty times and throw it five, those guys are bought into you know that's okay. If we're going to yep. win the game, we're going to win it that way. So, yep. I think it's just the attitude of the players. Um, as well as the mindset of just like, we need to do what we need to do to win, and, and everybody's bought into that. Absolutely awesome. And, you know, you have an interesting story compared to pretty much any other guy on the team. Um, you know, with you played with me all the way back in 2017, go on a mission, um, then come back to the program. So why don't you just kind of give a snapshot of your story and, and your timeline here at, at yeah. C of I, um, and, and really what went into the decision to, to definitely come back and how it's been coming back into the program. Yeah. Uh, so I, I came in 2017 for one season. I uh, got to be part of the first winning season yep. that they had fo since they bought, brought football back. Uh, and then I left after that season to go to England for two years to serve a church mission. Uh, and then I came back in 2020, but then it was COVID. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, it was kind of interesting coming back into that. But then we got a, a spring season of four games and then back into the real season. So yeah. And I talked to the guys all the time. It's so crazy to see the difference of, I mean, you know, we had great guys when we were here. Mm -hmm. Um great talent but the program just wasn't where no it the wanted, depth of talent and, yeah but, mm -hmm. they're just being bought into you know we're instead of oh wow like we won a game it's no we win we don't lose like it's mm -hmm. if we lose a game it's what what's going on and mm -hmm. so just the atmosphere of that changing too you know we're, we expect to win every single game we Absolutely. expect to win the conference every single year yeah. and now we expect to make the playoffs every single year mm -hmm. so just seeing the change in that has, has been uh really cool to see um and so like i said it's been what is that like six years, six Five years, or six years something yeah, like that, since yeah. I first came, and you know I graduate next month, but uh, the program has changed so much, and it's fired me up so much that I'm even gonna come back probably for awesome the next year uh, do the grad program here just because I mean the program's um, it's, it's really, really something yeah it's something mm -hmm. that um, it's just exciting it's an exciting atmosphere to be around it it brings in better and better recruits every year and. Guys just want to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, there you go, Yo fans. You got some breaking news. This guy's <laughs> probably coming back to smash some heads again next year. So, um, anyway, thanks for your time, man. Uh, Yo fans, again, hopefully you guys make the short drive to Legrand to watch this guy take on the Eastern Oregon Mountaineers. And, and we appreciate it. We'll talk to you again yeah. soon, man. Thank thanks, you. Bro.